thank you all for tuning in my channel. Uh, if this video doesn't pertain to your particular problem, please go to my channel and find the playlist labeled Well Q&A. And there are uh, over dozens of videos on there that are all self-explanatory and uh, very informative for anything that are well system related, whether it be a filter or a tank or a pump or a water softener, how to pull your pump out, stuff like that. Um, last few comments I've gotten were, why is my brand new well pump tripping the breaker? And the most common reason for why a well pump is tripping a breaker after you just replaced it is the fact that you bought either a 115 volt pump when you should have bought a 230 volt pump or vice versa. So how do you tell if you have a 115 volt system or a 230 volt system? Well, if you come to the pumps, and this is the only way you can do it if you actually have the you know the uh, ability to see the old pump but if you're here watching the video you've already installed the other pump so let me show you on any tank or on any pump you're going to have your inspection tag right here with all of the information on it if you find right here let's see if i can zoom in on it so we have volts 115 and we come over here to this pump. It says volts 230. So if you look at these pumps, there's no visible difference in either of those. You can't physically tell that they're different. Now, if you've installed your well pump, you should still have the box that it came in. On the box, you'll see on the label, it'll tell you whether or not it is... 115 volt or you come over here and on this one it says 230 volt so how do you know without an electric meter do you have a 240 volt well pump or 115 volt well pump well you go to your breaker panel your breaker panel is going to show you everything that you need so we're out here at the breaker panel now typical 90 percent of houses are going to have a double 20 breaker now what i mean by double is you have a set of breakers that are connected together like you see here this is going to be a 240 volt breaker now typically the double 20 is going to be the well pump a double 30 is going to be your water heater a 50 is going to be like either your dryer or your oven or your stove in your house and any of these that are singles are all 110 volt so typically you should have a label panel here that tells you all the designated spots for your breaker and which one it is so if this is your breaker that says labeled well that would mean you have a 240 volt well pump if your panel over here says oh number 10 we'll go to number 10 and then number 10 says that then this would be your well pump and you would have a single which you would have a 115 volt well pump. And that's how you can tell easily without having to have an electric meter handy. Now, if you have an electric meter, if you're gonna go buy one, this is the, the type that I would recommend. This is a clamp style amp meter and electric meter. It will do volts, AC, DC, ohms, and amperage. Now, in order to test to see if your well pump is bad, your well pump itself is going to physically be down in the well. So the only wires that you're going to have accessible are the wires at the top of the well and also the wires at your pressure switch. Now you can test to see if your well pump is bad by simply taking the wire that is at the top of the well. You have to take one individual wire, whether it be black or white or red. You have to take that wire and you have to clamp that amp meter around it and then get a reading. Now, if it is a 110, 115 volt well pump, your reading should be somewhere around 11 and a half amps. If you come over here to the 240 volt well pump and you clamp it around one of the wires, you should read somewhere around six to six and a half, maybe seven amps. All depends on whatever manufacturer made that motor. Now, a half horsepower is gonna pull six amps, Three quarters gonna pull closer to seven, and a one horsepower is gonna pull closer to nine. Now, if you have a older pump that's in your well and you test this this way, 
and it says you're pulling say 16 amps it's time to replace the pump because the bearings have gone bad and you're experiencing your pump failure because it'll run for maybe two minutes at a time it'll shut off you give it about 10 minutes of rest time and it'll come right back on the reason why is the pump is overheating and it's turning itself off on the thermal overload but typically you don't get that in a new pump situation you can uh, that will be a uh, you know a manufactured flaw or a defect in the pump but you can test it real simply with a clamp style amp meter now another common reason for why is the well pump tripping the breaker after you just installed it is typically going to be how you spliced your wires now there's only really two ways of doing this that i would say is proper or professional and i'm going to show you both ways right now so you want to get a stake on a metal stake on that looks very similar that looks just like this you do not want to use any of those plastic coated automotive uh, electronic you know inline crimps you do not want to use those you want to crimp them on just like you see i have done here and then you're, you've got your other wire that's going to lead up to the top of the ground you're going to take what uh, we have here which is a clear uh, heat shrink now this when you take it you're going to put it over your wire like this and you're going to take your other wire put it in here you're going to crimp it then you're going to divide this put it right in the middle and you're going to heat this with either a heat gun or a blowtorch evenly distributed until you see some uh, epoxy resin come out of both ends of this and then you have done a complete seal now after that i would recommend using black electrical tape and wrap around all, you know each one of these individually and another way of doing this without using this now if you do use this don't use the black or the red heat shrink that you would use in automotive it is not waterproof like this it does not have the epoxy <clears throat> which this has in it now another wire splicing method would be to use rubberized tape which i have here it's going to have a black plat or a blue plastic uh, covering on it you're going to have to peel that back and in order to to use this properly you're going to start at the base of the stakeon and you're going to wrap it and you're already going to have your other wire here and crimped and you're going to slowly go over it stretch a little bit as you go and keep going over it and keep going over it and i go over it and then i go back across it one time and then once i'm done with my rubberized tape i go over top of it with the black electrical tape only use black electrical tape in wells never use duct tape this stuff will not disintegrate like duct tape will.